The old 210 behind me here is receiving a birthday present today in the form of one of my 7.7 mil EDC pumps. And this is quite exciting because what we're gonna do today is something that you've probably never seen before. Uh, we are gonna install 7.7 mil pump with no other upgrades. This car is bone stock factory standard. And apart from a few remedial items that we're gonna to do to make it more reliable, it's not gonna get other, any other upgrades other than this. We've already dynoed it before, and I'll show you the results of that in a second. And we're gonna dyno it after and see what installing a 7.7 mil pump can give you guys a hope. Right, before we get too involved in the job, let's have a look at some of the parts we're gonna use and let's have a look at the costs associated with those parts. Right, top of the list, we've got the injector pump. Here's an invoice uh, that the invoicing department has created. These are the parts that I would recommend. Obviously you can add or subtract any that you want. So top of the list, we've got the EDC pump. That build for a 7.7 mil that looks that good is 895 pounds. Now, that does not include the core. That's if you send us the core. If you want us to supply the core, it's 200 on top of that. All right, so that's a total cost of 1095 for the EDC pump core. Right, next thing we've got in there is the fuel pump locking tool. They're 30 pounds, and that is obviously to lock the pump for when you install it. Um, what have we got next? Now, this is what I think is quite crucial the EDC O-ring kit. Now this O-ring kit includes basically every single, let's go over to the car and show this. It includes every single O-ring related to this system. Now this particular car did have fuel drain back issues. So that was absolutely essential on that car. And that kit includes every single one, which if you were trying to search for that at the dealer, it would be a real pain because there's lots of different sizes. That kit includes them all, and that kit is five pounds and 50 pence well spent. Right, next thing, vacuum pump gasket. Now you're gonna want a vacuum pump gasket because if you use sealant on this vacuum pump gasket, like some people do, you will block up the tiny little oil hole. Well, it's not tiny on the gasket, but it is tiny on the vacuum pump and then it will not lubricate your vacuum pump, that'll fail or it'll blow oil everywhere. So that essential. Injector line clips. Now I say that is essential for a reliability point of view. If you don't correctly secure your injector lines and the injector lines are vibrating about with the pulse, they will snap. I know because I did that very many years ago, like a foolish young individual. So that is 15 pound 20 well spent. Okay, so what else have we got? Inlet manifold gasket. Well, you're going to need one of those because you're going to have to take the inlet manifold off and fit it back on again. Um, now, these two, which you don't often see people bothering with, but I think it's really quite crucial. The fuel filter and the oil filter. Now, this is a brand new injector pump. Look, look at the look at it. Look how clean that is. That is gorgeous, right? Are you going to put probably a million year old? dirty oil straight into that pump. You might do, but I wouldn't. So for the price of it, an oil filter and then a fuel filter, because obviously it's a fuel pump, let's do both at the same time. So you're going to need around 10 litres, 5W40 fully synthetic oil to fill a backup. Takes about, I think from memory about nine. So you usually save with 10. Um, now, something I'm again changing on this one, um, you might or might not decide to, three-piece tensioner kit. A lot of people report on the internet that their engine's making a strange vibrating noise. It's super common for this damper to fail and then it causes a really awful vibrating noise on the front of those engines. So whenever I get involved in doing anything to the front of one of those, just replace all three pieces. I call that a three-piece tensioner kit and that is 135 pounds for all those pieces. Um, right, next thing, again, I class this as essential. It's nothing to do with the fuel pump, but I'm in there and I'm gonna do this car right because it's mine. Um, water pump with a steel impeller. Now, I can't stress enough how 
often I see the standard plastic impeller fail. Don't let it happen to you. This steel water pump upgrade is £75 and it is going to prevent that from happening from you, to you. It comes with the gasket. It, again, I consider this essential. Um, glow plug set, obviously we've got the inlet manifold off. Um, we've got the pump out of the way, so why not? Let's do the glow plugs while we're in there. Again, totally up to you, but it's what I'm doing while I'm in there. Now, inlet manifold connection pipe. Now obviously this goes on the underneath of the manifold where the EGR valve would be um, and that allows you to have a better, more secure connection, well especially more secure than mine because my EGR valve actually, someone, some horrible person, has snapped the fitting off. So what I'm concerned about with mine is when any boost goes into there it's going to just blow this whole thing off the boost pipe. So instead I'm putting the inlet manifold connection pipe on that we use on custom builds. I'm putting one of them on there because you can just fit it directly. The only thing you have to pay attention to is you have to cut. There's like a little clamp on the side of this piece of pipe. You have to just slice the side of that because you don't want that clamp in the way. So you can get the silicon right over. Now the other thing which we might or might not need for this test, the boost sensor. Now. We may want to upgrade the boost sensor to decrease the on-boost fueling. Uh, and it does this by, I suppose, in reality, fooling the ECU. Now, the regular boost sensor um, obviously gives a feedback voltage according to the boost that's applied. Now, if that's a, I can't remember what the standard one is, I think it's the two bar. It, it, it slips my mind. I think it's a two bar. Let's say that the standard one's a two bar. That means it'll give five volt feedback at two bar. Now this one, three bar sensor, this will give a five volt feedback at three bar. So that means that for the pressure applied, the ECU will give less fuel because it thinks there's less pressure because we're fooling it with this differently rated sensor. So if you're wanting to decrease the fueling on your setup, reduce smoke or whatever, increase the value of your boost sensor, put a three bar, four bar, whatever you can get onto there. So I'm gonna try it with the standard, obviously, the whole point of this is to, to test this all out with the standard one. If it's too smoky for my liking, which I'm assuming it probably will be, we're gonna fit this and that'll rescale things. And if, if it's still not enough, we'll go up to the four bar. Does that all make sense? I suppose I better get on with fitting that nice shiny pump then, haven't I? What we've done is dynoed the totally standard factory figures and we got a hundred I haven't got my mic on, I have to remember this direction. 168 crankshaft horsepower, 168.9 uh, and 137 at the wheels, which is pretty good for one of these. And it felt good to be fair, it felt like a good, powerful example. So what we're doing is we're taking off the original injector pump and we're fitting a 7.7 mil diesel pump UK version to see what difference that makes alone. So no custom map, no other bits, just the pump and let's see what the power difference is. However, while we've got it in bits, we're doing some essential maintenance. So you can see the water pump's currently off um, because we're replacing the water pump because if you know anything about 606s, or if you don't, I'm gonna tell you, 
the standard water pumps have a plastic impeller and they fail, they snap right in half. So we sell uh, a metal version. So we're changing that while we're in because it makes no sense not to. Uh, and also, we are replacing uh, some of these injector pipe, well, the injector feed pipe lines, the O-rings. You can see that someone's already made an attempt to change some of these, uh, but unfortunately they missed the important one that actually is allowing air to pull into the system. I'm going to show you how to remove the pump. You can see I've already move, removed a few of these components, so the inlet manifold is currently off. Uh, there's... Mm, the inlet manifold, T40 bolts along the top, they're nothing tricky. These four bolts here that go underneath the manifold into the EGR valve, they can be a bit tricky. Uh, if, you, if you struggle to actually get a Torx bit on there, an inverted Torx bit, you can actually use an 8mm combination wrench, the ring end, to get to those awkward bolts because they are awkward. And if they're really giving you grief, you can go from underneath with a really long extension. So get the inlet manifold off and out of the way. Um, so that's what we've done. Uh, vacuum pump is currently off as well. Um, and you can see that what I've done here is uh, inlet's been taken off. This has been taped up and then I've removed the injector pipe uh, retaining brackets. Now, what happens is the injector pipe clips snap and they have a tendency to fall in these holes and they're a nightmare for it. So whenever you've worked in this area, make sure you check with a torch every one of those holes before you start the engine back up. Cool, so next thing I've done is I've loosened the injector lines. This pump's coming off. Um, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna continue taking off them injector lines. I'm gonna go and get some covers for those to bung them up, so bear with me. Right, so as we're taking the injector lines off, um, one thing that's interesting uh, to remember is, and something that you might not know, the factory injectors in these cars, they are a pimple style. This is an indirect injection engine and they do not need to be upgraded to make big horsepower. So if you want to make 600 horsepower, you can make 600 horsepower with the stock injectors. There is no reason to upgrade those unless you have any wear issues or corrosion issues. However, when we do rebuild these injectors, um, we rebuild customers injectors, We'll set the pop pressure slightly higher from the one standard 130 bar to 150 bar. We'll fit new nozzles into them, but none of the internal parts of the injector are required to be upgraded. So there you go. No need for performance injectors. How good is that? Right, so as you can see, as I've taken those injector lines off, I, uh, I've put a cap on every single one of the injectors. I haven't capped the injector pump because the injector pump is going to be discarded. So I'm not too bothered about any grit or dirt getting in there. The injector pipes, however, I am concerned, but they're gonna be going in the ultrasonic bath. So I'm just gonna put these to one side for now. And then they're gonna get ultrasonically cleaned. Everything I'm taking off today is getting clean. So next thing I've done is I've unhooked this wire here. Look, this is your main. Um, cable that feeds the back of the EDC pump with its signal and its electrical information. That magical stuff that I don't like very much. And to release the plug, take a screwdriver and you just push down on this clip and it releases the plug. Yeah, nice and simple. No need to cut that. <laughs> You'd be surprised how many I've seen. Right, important bit of the video, the removal of the injector pump. <clears throat> now it's absolutely essential that we take the injector pump off in the right position, rotational position of the engine because, because when you go to install the pump, that's where it's gonna be. You cannot rotate the engine, I can't stress this enough, you cannot rotate the engine whilst the injector pump is off, right? So, I am just taking off a few other little bits and pieces here to make access easier. Uh, I'm gonna take off the SOV. That stands for Sonovich. Doesn't really, I don't know what it stands for. It's like the emergency stop solenoid part of the pump. Uh, and I'm gonna take off the lift pump because I'm gonna fit another one of those.
Now remember when you take the lift pump off the injector pump, it makes a mess. It always makes a mess. It goes all over the floor. So bear that in mind. It's really weird working on one of these in a vehicle. There's two that I did last week. How much nicer the layer than this one? And that's a question which we've just been mentioning. Um, how far do you go with this? So obviously this is my car uh, that I'm doing the testing with. I'm replacing the water pump of, as I've already discussed because that is a prone failure point. But the glow plugs are an also an issue and we've got the injector pipes off. What better time to glow plugs than now while the injector pipes are off? So it may well be worth doing those while you're in here. And then you could say, well, EGR, should you delete that at the same time? Might as well while you're in here, aren't you? Um, and that's why this stuff gets really expensive really quick because these are older engines, they're in older vehicles, and if you want it to re be reliable, you can't just put your blinkers on and do, <coughs> and ignore it. You know, it's important. It is not a budget option. Right, so, We've got those two out of the way. That's going to make us some room. I'm going to unplug that. Unplug that SOV. I should have done that before I took it off. Now I've got a drain tray and cardboard underneath this because it does make a mess. Now this is the pre-filter that I'm just doing here. Now I often, when building my normal builds, I remove the pre-filter and this pre-filter, this pre-heater out of the head uh, because they are prone points of pulling in air when the o-rings fail on these because they're under suction you do end up getting air ingress into the system from that area oh look that's already broken so that needs a replacement or deleting interesting though the uh, the pre filters nice and clean inside but um, the o-ring doesn't look too bad on the bottom of it but that's going to need replacing nevertheless and this is where <laughs> this is where you go down the rabbit hole I'm not saying you shouldn't do this, I'm just saying. Make sure your bank is full before you start. <laughs> That's the back bolt in the pump. I'll we'll take that one out. Uh, right, so now we need to rotate the engine and get that in the right position. Have I already undone the bolt? No. Right, so we need to do that. So 17 mil and we're gonna undo the sight bung on the side of the pump. Now, it's not really essential to do this, but I'm doing it because I'm interested to see what the timing position is. Now, normally, factory pumps are fitted at 14.5 degrees after TDC. That's the standard position of the pump. Now, when we're doing when we're installing custom pumps, we reinstall them generally at 11 degrees after TDC, which gives you obviously more time in advance because it's the wrong side of the, let's not go into that right now. Um, question is, I'm gonna fit this 7.7 mil pump to this car, where am I gonna have it? Well, if I get it closer to the 14.5, it's gonna be a bit softer and a bit smoother. Uh, if I go towards the 11, it's gonna be better at making top end power because it's gonna put the fuel in earlier, but it'll probably be a bit noisier, a bit clatterier. So I think I'm gonna stick with the 14.5 degrees. I'm gonna be gaining much quicker injector duration because of the bigger elements anyway. So yeah, let's stick it in at the factory position at 14.5 degrees. So I'm gonna turn the engine over now and get it to there. So what we're looking at, if we look down here at the crankshaft, you've got your 27 mil on your ratchet. Put it on the crank nut, being careful not to damage the radiator. So we're going to turn it over so make sure there's nothing that's going to jam in anywhere. And just rotate it. You see those numbers coming round. What you want to be aligning them with is the edge of this. The edge of this marker. So there is TDC. And then we want to be 14 and a half. Now I haven't checked to see if we're on the right revolution of the engine. I haven't checked that yet, I've just turned it to 14.5 because what I'm gonna do is, I'm now gonna have a little look 
in the hole in the side of the pub here. I'm going to have a look in there. I might have to do it with a camera because I can't actually see. Let's see if I can. I'm going to have to turn you upside down, unfortunately. I'm going to have a look in there and see if we can see that marker. Can you press on that to focus it for me? Mm. No, it won't do it at all, will it? Well, anyway, that's where you're going to look. And what you're going to be looking for is the pointer in the timing hole. I'm going to get a mirror and double check that. Now, if you struggle, a squirt of WD-40 helps to clean off that little pointer so you can see it better. And also, if you struggle even further and you just can't see into that hole, what you can do is pull back your tape, have a look in your, have a look in your inlet hole, and you wait to see your inlet valve, yeah? And when you rotate the engine, the inlet valve will open. And as that valve opens, that means the piston is on its downstroke, it's sucking in the air, and then as the piston starts to come back up, the valve closes, and then that's your compression stroke. And then when that gets to the top, that's your TDC position. So that is the correct position, the correct rotation. So what you wanna see is turn your engine over, watch the, well, we'll do it now. We'll do it now. It saves me having to um, WD-40 at the end of that. Let's do it together. So I'm gonna put that on there like that. Right, and I'm looking in this hole. I'm looking at the valve you Can see the valve. I'm trying not to skin my knuckle on that. Turning it and turning it until we see that valve open. We will be absolutely in the wrong position. Right, there you go. Look, see that valve is opening now. Just back it up because you're covering it all. I can't see it. That's it, right. So we're open. We'll close him. We'll close him. You can see it. So then the piston is now on its way up, okay? So now we move from there to here. We're now looking at the, the marker again. We know that the number one piston is on its way up. Let's turn it. This applies to any engine, not just the 606. So as we can see, that is now TDC. Well, I'm just a bit over, I'm in a bad position. So now I'm going to turn that to 14.5 because we're going to put it on in the factory position. One a bit far. Oh no, sorry, that's not even 10 minutes far. I don't know if you can still see this. Right there, we're at 14.5 degrees after TDC. Yeah? Right, so that is critical that you've got that set there. Now, before I did that, before I rotated the engine, I already cracked the nut on here, which by the way, is a backwards thread. It's a reverse thread, 17 mil. I've already cracked that. And the reason I did that is because when you're really happy with your timing, you've got it in the right place, and then you realize you haven't cracked that note. When you go to crack that note, it moves your timing. So, now what I'm gonna do is, now I'm confident that that's in the right position. I, I really couldn't care less, to be honest, whether the timing mark is in the hole or not, because I know that that's the correct firing position for this engine. Cover that back up so nothing falls in. I'm now gonna take a piece of rubber hose. You've seen me do this. You'll have seen me do this before. So I'm going to take a piece of rubber hose and I'm going to stick it, if you hold the torch, I'm going to stick it in here, look. I'm going to stick it underneath the gear like that so that that gear can't drop. And that's a piece of, I think that's eight mil internal hose, something like that, might be nine, nine and a half mil. Um, right, so that sits in there nice. Now we can take off 
that nut, the, um, the bolt. Take that out. Yep, it's going to be really oily. So just make sure you've got a bit of rag to handle it. So the only things we've got left to take out are the 313 mils with the captive nuts on the back. They're dead easy. It's these three bolts here. There's, there's one there, one there, and then one there, look. And what you want to do is, as you want to do these, as soon as you've got them to about that point there, where they're loose, you want to put your hand in here and catch that captive nut. Because otherwise, that is going to fall down the back of the engine and you don't want that to happen. Uh, one more. Right, so this one's taking the weight of the pump. So you might start to see the pump start to tilt back as you take this last one out. As you saw, I've already taken the rear bolt out. Right, three captive nuts, don't lose them, put them somewhere safe. Now, as I've shown before, the best method for this, you grab the pump with one hand and you're gonna put your finger in the gear on the other hand, yeah? And that's gonna stop it all just rocking and going all over the place. You wanna keep it all nice and steady so that no chain slippage is going on. You're gonna rock the pump like this, give it a real good jiggle. Jiggle, 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 right, and then it's out. That's it. And then just go straight backwards with it. Don't be clanging it into that gear over and over again and disturbing the gear. You wanna just come straight back to the pump. Then, in all its leaky glory, it's out. And you would obviously, just like I am, be well prepared with a piece of cardboard to put this horrible leaky thing down on. No, no, don't say that out. It's pouring oil out. <laughs> right. And the reason I've got the side plate off there is secret. I'm not going to tell you why I've got that side plate off. there you have it one pump removed so now we need some new bits to fix all this and the o-rings that we often discuss about the air ingress issue is all within these so if you take if you pull these clips off and pull these pipes off you'll see tiny little o-rings on the end and it's it's those that fail uh, and they're for nothing they're for pence and if you replace them all you won't have any issues for another how old is it 20 odd years Right, nice shiny pump time. Right, so we've removed the old fuel pump. Let's refit the new one. So the pump will come with this gasket here, look. This is your front O-ring gasket. Now make sure that you put that on, obviously, and make sure that the mating surface on the back of here is clean, because often, if I can get my torch out of my pocket, often that surface there is quite dirty and it can be dusty and horrible. So I'm gonna give that a little wipe and then apply a little bit of grease just around this o-ring now don't go mad because if you do go mad what happens um, is when it warms the grease up it all leaks down the side and then straight away someone goes ah your fuel pump leaks you haven't built it right but it actually is just the grease <laughs> I'm sure that will never did ever happen so something that you need to know about these fuel pumps so the EDC pumps have a different internal offset to the standard mechanical pumps so as you saw yesterday I took the fuel pump off at 14 and a half degrees and that's exactly what it tells you to fit it back to on here it says fit X meaning pump locking tool in there locked in at 14.5 degrees now remember never to turn the pump with a locking tool in you turn the pump into the right position so the pointer is stuck up then you put the locking tool in the pump is locked job done right then you install the pump don't tighten any bolts 
don't turn anything while that tool's in because if you twist that internal pointer you're going to lose the timing of your pump so if you didn't get it on right first time you're not going to be able to get it on after that point it's going to have to come back to us okay and i did discuss in another video how you can check that right so 14 and a half degrees and then we're going to install it so same as taking it off basically um oh i need to give that area a wipe though i did just say uh, i was going to wipe it no i didn't wipe it Now, you can, if you're not quite as confident, um, you can take all that pipe work and everything off. But I've already got all the new O-rings and everything into there and had it all set up because I've been waiting for um, some quiet to do the video, basically. So I've already done all that assembly work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lower that in there now what you want to be really careful of is to not knock the timing gear now it is going to try and get caught on absolutely everything and that's fine just take your time you want to just slowly guide it into that gear at the front and then you can see these pipes are holding me off everything will fight you want to get it nicely in line and then your finger wants to be in the gear at the front making sure that you're not you're not basically pushing that the gear in the chain and dislocating the factory timing and that goes straight in like that now i've mentioned it many times before do not if that pump doesn't go in straight in don't be tempted to go tighten the bolts and pull the pump in you will snap the lugs off the pump I see it so often. I see it so often that we even designed a pump based around broken lugs. <laughs> that is the hybrid pump. And that is basically a pump that once upon a time, someone has struggled, snapped the lug, and then we've had to machine it and fit the hybrid face on it. There's 20 of those in stock here. There are some really nice benefits of the hybrid pump I will add while I'm here. But while we're talking about hybrid, hybrid pumps, uh, and one of them is the... Um, it allows you to fit an RS-156 at EDC rotation, so you don't have to bend any injector lines. And I love that about it. Anyway, back to topic. I'm putting these 13 mils in the three in the front that we showed before. I'm just doing them by hand. I am not... I am not doing them with a gun or any kind of harsh method like that. Now that fuel pump locking tool looks to me like it's popped out of alignment. Which may mean I'll have to set this pump back off again. If I'm right in what I'm thinking. Now that is quite a common issue. Is for that, um, as you're installing it into the spline, for it to rotate um, and pop, them, pop the, the locking tool out, so you have to look out for that. Um, but you will see that when you double check by turning the engine over. So at this stage, all this stuff that you're putting back in, the reverse bolt and all that kind of stuff, it's all pretty much hand tight. Always remember to tighten that backwards, it's so bizarre. Hold on tight. Right, now then. We'll look and check that it is up to it. So I am pulling the pump. I'm just going to give them a little turn. It is not pulling on the injector pump. say I think that locking tool has popped out so chances are I'm gonna to have to alter this anyway. Right so therein I have not tightened the front marker. Yeah that timing pointer isn't locked in. It turned as I was taking it out. So chances are that pump's not on right. 
Now sometimes you will have to dick around for ages getting this right, and other times it will just go straight on. Right, have you got something that I can use as a torch to just have a... Right, so that needs to stay there. Okay. You can see into the hole, not very well I might add, and then you need to reach round with the round with the ratchet. You're doing this with one hand, remember. And you want him to get that pointer into the middle of that hole. Right, so. Now that, to me, looks about bang on. Now then, let's have a look at what the marker is saying. Yes, the marker is saying 18 degrees, so that's way too far forward. It definitely jumped to spline. So what we need to do is take it back off, realign it, do it all again. You have to rotate the engine twice again, get it back to 14 and a half degrees, and then do it, do it all again. It's a bit painful, but it's gotta be done right. So turn your engine over twice again, back to 14.5, take it off, lock the pump, fit it again. Right, we're back again. So I took the pump off, and then put it on and took it off and put it on and took it off and put it on and it kept just jumping and popping that little locking tool out now if that happens to you try it a couple of times just to make sure it isn't fluke and you've twisted the pump but if it continues to do it don't be tempted to adjust the adjuster and twist the pump over just to make it work because you're going to have to bend all your injector lines instead what you can do is this if you look down here can you see well, it doesn't line up now, but you see how there's a blue dot there? What I did is I put a blue dot from the chain onto the sprocket for the pump. And then I removed, when I had the pump back off, I held the chain up with two fingers and I just moved the sprocket one tooth whilst holding the chain up so nothing went slack and then popped my rubber pipe back underneath it to hold it all up. That then moves the spline and it will allow it to go in, which it did. So don't be scared to do that if you have to. If, if you're struggling and struggling, sometimes you have to do that. Um, out of those two crate engines there, one that I built went straight on, the other one I must have tried six times and in the end I just moved the sprocket like that. Right, so what I did then is I checked through the hole like that. So I turned my engine to 14.5 degrees. I made sure that my marker was in the hole, which it is. You might be able, yeah, you can see in the camera there it is. And then, just to, because obviously you guys are doing this at home, take your pump locking tool and before you um, do all this, you might want to put a mark, a blue mark, a, a pen mark to show how far this rod sticks out when it's locked in or a, or a measurement, right? So to, what I do is once I've got the pump in place and everything's sort of, I'm, I'm happy, I'll put that in there and I'll make sure that that's in. Now I know just from looking at that pump locking tool, because I'm used to looking at them, that that is in, let me put a torch on it, that that is in far enough, um, that is right and it's locked. And also to check, if you try and twist the end of that, if you try and twist the end of the rod, because it has a, a kind of a tooth on the end, you can't twist it if it's locked in. So that's it, that's locked, that's good. That's, that pump is in the right location. Now, as we've discussed before, what you always have to do when you've fitted a pump, don't be lazy, but don't be tempted to just go, oh, that's all right. Always turn the engine over two full revolutions and test again the position, the positional marker of that pump. Because if you don't, um, it can take up the chain tension and it can turn out to be totally wrong. And I've seen that loads of times. So let's do that together now. And what I'm gonna do is because I mentioned about the AB light, just to make my life easier to speed this up for you guys and for me, I'm gonna use the proper tool, the Mercedes tool, the AB light, and I'm gonna show you what the AB light is. So this has a little tang and it has two prongs here. And it's basically going to measure the voltage across them. And then it's gonna show us a light. And basically when it's in position, we should see both of these lights on at the same time. So let me just pop that in there now. So 
so that's in there. I don't like to push it in all the way because I'm going to be rotating the engine. Now this, if it's in the right position, will light up. Okay, so you can see one light's on. Let me just push that in. Nope, so what we need to do is, let me turn the crank and you will see. So what I'll do is I'll go around twice to just tension the chain as I've just described and then we'll do the setup. You can see it went to the other one there. So right, we'll go in round. Still nice and easy because my glow plugs aren't in. It really does make it bliss. Right, so that's one time round. Right, we're coming up to the next. Right, that is zero. That is 10. So if I just put my finger on the back of that tool, you can see the B is already lit up. So we're gonna just turn it really slow until the A lights up at the same time. Can you see those lights, yeah? So I'm going, oh, I'm trying to do it so gently. There we go. A and B are on at the same time. So that is, I've let go of it and that's why it's just, you some, I just like to press it in and then that, that gives you both lights on. But if you look now down at my timing pointer here, you can see, use that as a torch, you can see that I'm on the 14.5 degrees, which I want to be. So we've turned it over twice, we know that the chain's tight, and we've double checked it with that AB light, which obviously, like I say, if you guys don't have it at home, you're going to check it by putting your timing pointer in. But don't rotate the engine with the timing pointer in. You're only going to put it in after to check it. Use something like this iPhone with a light on the back to actually see make sure that point is in the middle. Okay, right, so that is pump fitted. So the next thing I did is, obviously I hooked, I put my SOV back on. I want to use the SOV, even though we do do a delete kit for the SOV, I want to use the SOV because it is an emergency stop. So if the rack ever gets jammed in the pump or anything horrible were to happen like that, you turn the key off and that's gonna stop the engine. It's a safety device and realistically, it's there for a reason, so. And it's not gonna restrict any power. Replace all your O-rings, keep it fitted. Um, and then obviously I've done the fuel filter, you've already seen that, I've already done the oil change. I'm gonna put the glow plugs back in, I'm gonna put the injector pipes back on, uh, put the auxiliary belt back on, which I'm gonna tell you the size of the auxiliary belt now. It is a 6PK2130, 2130 for an air conditioned car like this. I'm gonna put my uh, tensioner back on and then hopefully we can dyno this bad boy. So long for now. Right, it's time to put the injector pipes on. So take your injector pipes, I've already cleaned them in the ultrasonic, but you don't necessarily have to. Blow them out. Make sure there's nothing in them, no dust or grit or anything like that. If you have re-bent the injector lines for any reason, even though I've advised you against it, you will want to ultrasonic or blow them out because if there was any scale inside the line and you've loosened it by bending them, you don't want to bend them, then run the engine. You want to bend them, take them back off, then blow them out, then put them back on. Yeah? Right, okay, so... I've put these rear four on and I'm just putting the two front ones on now. As you can see, we're all, we're pretty close. I've, I think the pipe was already, the pump was already piped up last time you saw it. And we're just, if I can get them the right way around. There we go. It's just tightening them down. So you can see I've fitted the three piece tensioner. I fitted the uh, vacuum pump with the new gasket. I scraped clean the gasket surface. I will stress again, do not use any sealant on the vacuum pump gasket. It will cause problems. Don't use any, don't use any sealant on the injector pump either. Uh, the O-ring and a bit of grease is fine. 
Right, so before I tighten them down, I'm going to give each nut a little squirt of WD-40 or any kind of penetrating oil. And that just helps. It doesn't help you to find any leaks after you've started, but it does help to stop the material galling when you tighten them down. Um, you can also see I've put the pump wire in on. That's sat back in place. Now, I haven't... Um, I haven't fully put that wire in and bolted it back on. And the reason is because the rear glow plug, I couldn't get it out. Five of them came out. One of them was pretty tough, but that back one, it will not come out. And the reason is because no one will have ever changed it because it's awkward behind the oil filter housing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to warm the engine up and then I'm going to attempt to take that out again injector pipe clips. I'll show you how to put the injector pipe clips on again. I've already showed you on the pump fitting video, but I'll show you again. So we put them on the underside first. So clip the bottom bit in like that. So it's clipped in and just go and do that to every single one. And they should go in as easy as that because you should have got your pipes back in the same location. It's, it's important to, to spend time and make sure your injector pipes are right because they will give you a breakdown down the road. I don't mean a mental breakdown. Well, it could do, I suppose. <laughs> right. And then these bottom ones, put the top side in first. That's in. And then that one there, the awkward one. Right. So then you want to take big screwdriver like that with a quite a blunt end so not sharp because you're not going to want to try and cut them and then you're literally just going to just sit that there like that and a gentle tap and that's it it's clipped in look do it on this one there we go it's clipped in clipped in and then obviously that one goes the other way around if I can get the hammer in I'm <laughs> normally doing this without the engine in the vehicle uh, I think that's clipped I think that's in I'll go and double check after uh, awkward one to get into just get into it the best way you can <laughs> that one clipped straight in Amazing. It's just that one I wasn't sure about. Oh no, it's in. Right, they're all in. So those, that is how long it takes to put on a set of injector pipe clips. It's that easy. And I promise you, that will, not only does it look terrible if you put a photo of your car or vehicle or whatever online with all the clips missing, because it clearly shows you don't know what you're doing, but it's so quick to just do it right and then these aren't going to shear off at the head and then cause you a breakdown these pipes aren't even available if you order one from mercedes you get a straight length and they expect you just to re-bend it so just take care with them and you won't have to do that okay um right i'm going to put the yes i'm going to put this air intake piece back on and then water pipe back on and then we're going to warm this up exciting Right, glow plugs waiting. It's cranking and cranking, but will it start? They do take a lot of bleeding up. There we go. There we go. It's trying. Right, let's give it a second. It's trying. I think it's going to go this time. Waiting for the glow plug. Here we go. Right, it's trying trying <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's close
I'm going to have to give it five. I've got faith. It's this time. It's definitely this time. Waiting for the glow plug. Here we go. Oh, it's going. It's going. It's going. It's going. There we have it, and she runs. Just put the extractor fan on. Right then, so this is running now with the 7.7 millimeter elements. They take a bit of cranking as you've seen, but how smooth is that? It sounds amazing like factory oh tell you what i need to do i got too keen there didn't i i pushed this pipe under there so that it wasn't in my way i'm in a rush because my camera person's saying that they have to get off and it's a friday afternoon so it's, it's stressful i'm trying to get this done in time why has it stayed like that? So literally, all we've got to do now is put the inlet manifold on and this thing can be dynoed. So I'll just try and restart it again. Are we ready? Wait for the glow plugs. Amazing. That is sweet. It's got like a very, very slight lump to it when it just starts up, but then smooth as anything, really. So now we're going to check for leaks, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to get that inlet manifold on. Oh, I'll tell you what I am going to do. That glow plug, that rear glow plug. It isn't even blowing any gas out. So I'm going to leave this to warm up, get all the coolant through it, then I'm going to put, try and get that glow plug out, then put the inlet on, then I'm going to dyno it. Sound good? Excited. I'm tired, but I think I've got it. I think I've got it. Here it comes. Oh. Ah. It's hot. And the socket's like too long to go in. I need some pliers. One sec. Pliers, pliers, pliers. Something smells really plasticky and burning. I'm sure that's normal. I've got it. <laughs> Victory. Not bothered about that pump that's running right. This. <laughs> Look at it smoking. <laughs> If you doubted that I'd warmed it up to get it out, no more doubting. There you go. Go with your five friends. Happy. And so after 65,000 years, I've managed to get the cooling system bled up. There's probably a Mercedes procedure to bleeding these up, but I very rarely work on two tens. And I always find that if you start it, let it warm, turn it off, leave it for a bit, top it up turn it on, let it warm up, turn it off, top it up. It's a, it's a pain, but you've always got other jobs to do, haven't you? So we're gonna put on the inlet manifold now because I'm confident that all that is nice. There's no leaking injector pipes. There's nothing leaking on the side of the pump. Everything is good. So look at what I've got here. I had this inlet manifold powder coated for, I think it came off my charger. And since we've gone billet manifold and everything, there's really no need for a, a standard manifold that's been powder coated. So I thought, why not? I mean, that's got to be worth seven horsepower, maybe. <laughs> right, let's fit it. Uh, right.
might just oh, try and take all the paint off it before I've even got it on. Do I do the old mountain bike handlebar grip trick and WD-40 the silicon so that when it goes in it just, it's in but it'll never come out again. Ah, look at this, this is another one horsepower. So all the T40s, obviously for our engine builds, we plate them all. So I've swapped this set for a set of plated ones. And how nice do they look? So I'm gonna get them installed in there. Copper grease, because we're professionals, aren't we? Only a little bit, don't go. You don't need to coat the gasket face in it, do we? Right, bit on there. T40 that I've already got out. I've got my hand dirty already, look. The DHL man is here. Videoing, it all looks easy when you're watching it on YouTube, but no, it's a life of interruptions. Right, this is it, this is the big moment, and we're about to do a dyno run. So this is, all those parts that we spoke about earlier are fitted. Um, it starts, and listen to how it's running. It's really smooth, it's spooky, it sounds like a standard car. Maybe just a slight little bit more crackly. But what's the betting then? I don't know. I'm gonna see, see what it makes. Right then, let's see what happens. Lamp defective. Well, I don't think we need to worry about that too much. Just going to get it in the right gear first. It's a bit more touchy on the throttle than it used to be. Oh, and it shifts a bit harder than it used to. That's interesting. I like the hard shift. Okay, right, let's do it. Foot down. It shifted gear on me. We might have to do another one. I'm not quite sure if it kicked down or I was in third and I thought I was in fourth. But that we can call that a warm up run, can't we? Bits of smoke, did you see the smoke on the camera? Yeah, bit smoky. And we've jumped up from, come on. We've jumped up from this is at the wheels, 137 to 161, 206 at the engine. That's pretty good. Okay, right, so what I think we should do now is another run without me, doing, without me getting the kick down and now that it's probably warmed up a little bit more. Right, we're ready to do a new test. So on this run, we're warm now, still on the factory boost sensor, so literally only thing changed is an upgraded injector pump. I think it's going to be a little too smoky for the road, so if you could film, if you go around the back of the fabrication area and film from there, and, I'll go, and, and then I'll, I'll set it off.
So as you saw earlier, I've already bolted this boost sensor to the bulkhead. So it's a case of taking it off the original boost sensor. The, both these boost sensors are plumbed in. So I've taken it off that boost sensor and I'm going to plug it onto this one. Oh, did I go too close to the... No, it's all right. Right, plugged straight on. We're going to try that. Let's see what happens. Fans on. And so, mic's gone flat, so excuse the difference in sound. But what we've concluded is, from the factory car, putting on the large pump, uh, we have gained 45, 45.8 horsepower um, at the engine. So we've gone from 168.9 to 214.7 horsepower and we've gained a little bit of torque because obviously the power band has moved. Now, what you'll notice is, if, you, if we just look at this, if you look a bit closer at this, if I turn the engine torque off, let's just look at the horsepower. What, what you can see is the blue line is the original now, this is on the stock pump, and you can see how it's, it's making its power much earlier and much lower down. Now, the reason for that is because of the larger pump, I seem to be getting slightly later gear shifts. So I am able, well, I could technically get it into fourth gear, slow it right down so it's comparable with this and then wind it up, which is probably what I should have done. But that's why you can see the power's coming in there earlier. It's not because the power is coming in earlier. Trust me, that thing feels way more feisty. Uh, but that's why it's showing up like that on the dyno. But the peak figures were here, you know, I think what you would see if I could get the, if I could get my foot down earlier, you'd see it coming up quicker. And I think you would just basically see a larger version of this all over. But I'm just being a bit restricted by what the gearbox is doing. But the good news is because of you, you're giving it, um, are you giving it more throttle? Are you technically giving it less throttle? It's made the gear shifts firmer, and I expected it to do the opposite, which is odd. I was worried it'd slip, but it isn't. It's like made it firmer, which is good. Um, the idle's fantastic. The smoke at start up and idle is negligible. It's just like the same as standard. And we've gained 45.8 horsepower. Um, changing the boost sensor made a little bit more boost pressure. Um, and a little bit more horsepower. So we, we just gained like four horsepower from changing the boost sensor. Um, I think because we've got the stock cat and all the other bits and pieces in, we're being quite limited to what we can do with that stock turbo. And the fact that even with the different boost sensor in, I, I don't think the ECU is still allowing that turbo to make much boost pressure. So... The thing to do next, really, would be to upgrade the turbo. Let's get more boost, let's get more flow into it. Because obviously, as we've discussed before, we can make the same one bar of boost with the small turbo and one bar of boost with the large turbo. 
and that one bar of boost with a larger turbo can make a lot more horsepower. There's often a misconception about that. Um, so it'd be interesting. That's what we're going to do next. Right, quickly before we end this, um, obviously the gains of 45.8 horsepower are fantastic, but the point of this 7.7 .7 mil pump is for the big gains that it can give. I mean, what we've got to consider is this pump is at max rack 180 cc, um, probably giving us 150 cc of usable fuel versus 90 with the stock six mil pump. So even though this thing just bolts on and makes this car way faster without any other changes required, um, it's the potential that this pump can give you. This pump's gonna get you, even with 120 cc, using just a small amount of its capability, get you into that 400 horsepower bracket with the right turbo system. So that is the good thing. You can do the pump as a first step and your O-rings because they're gonna leak in those other bits. So that's an important conclusion to make. We're putting that on because it gives us amazing future potential. However, it's giving us big gains by just bolting it on with no other issues. And unlike a petrol, it's not like changing some of the fueling components and then ending up with a lean or a rich scenario because obviously diesels, they use what they're given um, at idle speeds and things like that. So there's no damage to the engine unless the only damage you're going to do to this realistically is if you foot flat down, you're rolling coal and it's not making enough boost pressure and the heat in the exhaust system and stuff. But that's common sense, you know that can be avoided. You'd look in your rear view mirror and see a load of smoke back off a little bit. It's still going to make the same power. Um, but yeah, interesting. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. I certainly have. And bye for now.